Thank you everyone for joining us today. This is our second webinar of our Environment for the Americas info sessions. Today, we're gonna have three AFTA former and current interns that will present a day in the life of an AFTA intern. Uh, we're just gonna have some ground rules. Please mute your microphones during the presentation. We will be recording and we are also live on Facebook. Um, we will have the Q&A session after the presentations. So um, you guys can will be able to unmute yourself and ask questions then. You can also use the chat option um, for your questions. We'll be monitoring that. If you're able to, please turn your camera on so we can see you and interact with you. Um, and you can also use the chat box, box to introduce yourself. Um, this is uh, the Environment for the America's Internships Program team. So my name is Daniela Garcia and I am one of the Latino Heritage Internship Program coordinators this year, and I will have the rest of the team introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Sheila Diaz-Mendez. I'm coming to you from Puerto Rico, and I manage the Mosaics in Science Program at Environment for the Americas. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, and welcome back to some of you that attended the last session. Uh, my name is Chanel, and I'm the Mosaics and Science Program lead. And we also have Andrea Garcia. She is also one of the Latino Heritage and Internship Program coordinators, and she also coordinates the RAP internship. And we also, part of our team is Chuyu, and she is our awesome graphic designer. And Susan, if you wanna introduce yourself. Sure, my name is Susan Bonfield. I'm the Director of Environment for the Americas, and it's great to have all of you on learning more about our internship programs. Thanks for joining us today. And the last person on here is Chu Yu. She's our graphic designer, um, and she does everything like flyers, the handbooks. She does a lot of things for us. She's not on, but she's great. <laughs> she is. So Environment for the Americas is based in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. And Environment for the Americas was created in response to World Migratory Bird Day. So this has been going on for quite some time since 2007. And our mission has always been to engage a diverse workforce by fostering cultural awareness among its part partners and by engaging underrepresented youth in the fields of research, education, conservation, and preservation. And we really, really promote this. You can look at our staff diversity and you can just see how how we appreciate it. Next. So one of the programs we run is the Mosaics in Science uh, Diversity Internship Program. Uh, it provides meaningful and relevant science-based internships for racially and ethnically diverse students, uh, specifically targeting underrepresented groups in the Park Service workforce. Um, the workforce of the Park Service is about 18% racially diverse, and in STEM fields, it goes all the way down to 3%. So this program kind of helps combat that and increase diversity. So, yeah. Um, one of our other summer programs is the Latino Heritage Internship Program, which is designed to provide internship opportunities in diverse professional fields at the national parks to young adults who identify as Latino. Um, these are paid internships, 11 or 12 weeks, and um, the funding is provided by the National Park Service Youth Program Division. This year, our uh, Latino Heritage Internship Programs start on um, May 16th um, and they go up to August 4th and there is some flexibility with that and we have 32 positions for LHIP this year. Uh, we have a new program, the Fish and Feathers Connecting Parks and Communities Internship Program. Um, the locations will vary and they will cover um, every region. Um, there will be, um, this will start mid to late May, and the positions will be posted in late January or beginning of February on our Environment for the Americas website. So keep an eye out for those. 
As you can see, we coordinate science and environmental education internships with the National Park Service and other government agencies, including Fish and Wildlife Service, Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service, and others. So that's why we hold this career fair to, to bring to you all the opportunities that we have. Go to our Environment for the Americas webpage, and we will keep on doing our, <laughs> our career fairs we have. The next one is today and December 21st. Great, like Shelda mentioned, um, this is a partnership with our um, federal agencies. And so Environment for the Americas, our roles and responsibilities are to manage the application system. We screen and then we send the best, um, like the top qualified applicants to the park mentors and supervisors. They then will interview and select the intern for the position. Uh, we arrange the travel for the program participants. Uh, we pay the stipends, the housing, and travel costs to participants. And we also develop and facilitate weekly webinar seminars for the internships. And we are the point of contact for the interns and the site mentors and supervisors. So that is what NAFTA does. So when an intern is in a program, we expect um, them to have a commitment to the program and be engaged in park activities and operations. Uh, we also require attendance at our webinars that are professional development webinars. So obviously they're important. We want you guys there. We provide these opportunities for you to um, kind of take advantage of. Um, we require six blog posts throughout the internship, um, on time submission of timesheets, and attendance at a career and leadership work workshop, as well as communication with both EFTA staff and your site supervisor. There are very many intern benefits that we could go on and on about, but these are um, just the main ones. So all students will get a weekly stipend, uh, which is dependent on the program. Housing is provided. We cover travel costs to and from your site. Uh, um, you're able to get valuable on the ground education and at work experience. And like I said, we have professional development webinars and professional development just being at your park and being able to network. Um, like I said, blogs are a required part of the internship. You can find these and browse them on our websites on the Latino Heritage Internship Program, the EFTA website, the Environment for the Americas website, and the Mosaics and Science website. Um, this is kind of what they look like. You get to post photos, talk about your uh, work experience. And like I said, you do about six or more, encouraged to do more uh, throughout your internship. Yes, and this is also a great resource when you are thinking of applying for internships. You can see past experiences of interns um, and then how they, you know, how they were at the park and the position. So it's a great tool um, if you are gonna be applying. Great. So you can find all the mosaics, uh, Latino Heritage Internship Program, and not other internship program positions. Um, they're already posted on our website. So if you go to the mosaics website, um, mosaicsinscience.org, you're able to find the internships for that program there. If you go to latinoheritageintern.org, you'll find the LFIP positions posted on there. Um, but if you go for the to Environment for the Americas website, you are able to find all of the positions listed there for all of our programs. So this is the Environment for the Americas website. This is the home. This is where you land. Um, if you click on internships, there's a drop down menu that says available internships. So if you go on there, you're able to see all of the listings and you're able to see a map with the locations as well. They're all over the United States. So. Um, the map is a handy tool. So that is our introduction to Environment for the Americas. I will now have um, Brooke share her screen and introduce herself um, and show us a little bit about what it means to be an EFTA intern. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Brooke and I was a mosaics and science intern this past summer at Wind Cave National Park. And today I'll be sharing with you all my experience as a wildlife technician with the National Park Service. 
So a little bit of background about me. I'm originally from Irvine, California, and I went to Cornell where I graduated this past May with a bachelor's degree in environmental science and a concentration in environmental biology and applied ecology. Throughout undergrad, I was involved in a lot of research. I was a research assistant for the Elephant Listing Project, which is a Cornell research lab that uses bioacoustics to study forest elephants. I also did a summer internship in China doing field work studying a bird native to China called the hair crested drongo. And I completed an independent research project using camera traps to survey the mammal diversity around my college campus. So all of these experiences prepared me really well for my internship at Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. So I had a five month position from July to November of this year, where I worked as a biological science technician focusing on wildlife in the resource management division. I worked directly under the wildlife biologist who was my supervisor. The main project I was hired on for was completing a camera trapping project to survey mesocarnivores at Wind Cave National Park, Jewel Cave National Monument, and Mount Rushmore National Memorial. These three parks were all located about an hour's drive from each other in the Black Hills of South Dakota. This was more or less an independent project. I did get a lot of guidance from my supervisor, but a lot of the study design, data collection, data analysis, and final write-up was up to me. So it was really cool to have this opportunity to be in charge of my own study, and I learned a lot from the process. As a result of my project, I was actually able to document two new species of animals for the parks. I documented mink for the very first time at Wind Cave, which is pictured in the bottom right. Um, that's a photo I caught from my camera traps. And I also found the first northern flying squirrel at Jewel Cave, which you can see in the upper right, which is also a photo taken from my camera traps. Besides the camera trapping project, I was able to get a lot of hands-on experience working on a variety of other wildlife projects at Wind Cave. I helped out with the bi annual bison roundup where I flew in a helicopter to survey bison. I spent two weeks working night shifts to trap and release endangered black-footed ferrets. I served elk using radio, radio telemetry and tested them for chronic wasting disease and worked with a number of other really cool wildlife. And if you thought that wasn't cool enough, I also got to try several non-wildlife related things. I learned how to cave for the first time. So above ground, Wind Cave is forest and grassland, but it is most known for its underground cave system, which is the third longest cave in North America. So I got to accompany the cave scientists on many caving expeditions, where you're basically crawling through the cave on hands and knees, which I had never done before, but it was awesome and I'd love to do it again. Um, this internship was really the perfect, ex perfect experience as a young professional to learn so many new things. And because there were so many different projects going on, it never got boring. And I was always really excited to come to work every day. So each Mosaics in Science and Latino Heritage intern is based at a different national park and experiences vary widely depending on which park you're at. Personally, I did feel really supported by the Mosaics in Science program because they offered workshops to help navigate USA jobs or improve your federal resume. This internship as a whole really allowed me to get my foot in the door working in federal agencies. So for potential applicants who are interested in applying to the Mosaics in Science or Latino Heritage Internship Program, I would recommend getting involved in research if you're still in undergrad. Because I had camera trapping experience from undergrad, it allowed me to be hired on to do a camera trapping project with the National Park Service. So having field work and research experience makes you a much more competitive applicant. And if you feel ready to apply this year, then I would recommend getting started on the application early. Um, it's really exciting because there are so many internships posted. There's 24 for Mosaics and Science and 32 for Latino Heritage. So you should really take the time to go through each job description to see which ones are a good fit for you based on your interests and past experiences. 
It also helps to do research on the specific national parks you're looking at. So you can tailor your written responses to the specific job description and national park. Now, say you apply and you're not accepted into the program this year, then it doesn't hurt to apply again next year because I applied to this program twice. The first time I was not selected and I applied again two years later after gaining a lot more field work and research experience and I was selected this time around. So don't lose hope and try again. That is it for my presentation. You can save your questions for me until the very end and I'll be happy to answer them. And also feel free to contact me at my email provided here. I'm happy to stay in touch. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Brooke. Um, that was an awesome presentation. And now we are gonna have Lonnie share his screen and present. Good. Sorry about that. All right, can everybody see me? We good? Cool. Well, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you guys may be. I am Lonnie Johnson III. Um, I'm currently a law enforcement trainee with the United States Forest Service here in the Uno Wasatch Cache National Forest. Um, my program is a six month program, which is equivalent to about 960 hours of training that I must successfully complete before being um, eligible for appointment with the Forest Service. And um, like Brooke, I'm a, uh, I'm a trainer for the Environment of America as well. Um, I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, I recently graduated with two degrees. My first degree uh, comes from Florida and the University uh, in Criminal Justice. And I recently received my master's in Global Security and uh, International Affairs with a focus in international terrorism. terrorism. Um, prior to uh, coming to this internship, I spent three years working at the Florida Department of Corrections as a correction officer, while I worked a lot of time in confinement and worked with those with mental health issues. Um, I currently work in Utah, uh, the UN and Wasatch Cache National Forest, which is also known uh, as part of Region 4. Um, I do all my responsibilities and I do all my reporting at the Art and Ranger District. Um, we cover here in Region 4 at the UN and Wasatch Cache Forest, we cover Utah, Wyoming, Idaho and parts of Nevada. Um, some of the things that I do as a law enforcement um, trainee here with the United States Forest Service is providing education and safety to the public while also preserving the national resources here on public lands. Um, I'm assisting, I do a lot of assisting with my supervisor uh, with patrolling. I work with her a lot and a lot of the other uh, law enforcement officers and patrol captains here in the region. And we do a lot of patrolling through the mountains, forest, woods, may that be by vehicle, hiking, walking, uh, ATV riding, OSV uh, riding, all kinds of uh, patrolling we do. Um, learning the code of federal relations also is something that we uh, do a lot of due to the fact that that's how we enforce a lot of our federal laws. Uh, and last but not least, I do a lot of, I spend a lot of time in putting citations, violations, uh, violation notice, incident reports into our federal databases so they can be reviewed uh, by captains for approval. And this is this picture right here that I posted. Uh, we just recently did um, a community service event where we did shop with a cop. Uh, a lot of us got it together and went to Walmart and best kids with a good Christmas this year. Um, ways that the Environment for the America uh, internship program has helped me become, become successful is because there, um, there's a consistent communication on a week to week basis. Um, me and Andrea, Andrea have a good professional relationship. We spend a lot of time communicating um, um, and so she does a lot of time, spend a lot of time ensuring that I'm getting the best experience. So I definitely appreciate her for that. Um, we have monthly webinars, as she loves stated earlier, um, do monthly uh, webinars to help enhance our skills and abilities as professionals so we can um, be better interns. Um, the ability to have a conversation with our interns, with other interns in our field, region, or forest, uh, is definitely a great thing to have. Uh, some people in our, doing different professions in our um, in our forest. So talking to those on a day-to-day -day basis definitely helped our experience. And last but not least, uh, having funds allocated for our success, um, as stated earlier, uh, we do get uh, funds allocated towards uh, our internship program. And um, I'm, I'm getting ready to go into Las Vegas uh, detail here this coming weekend 
And um, without the environment for the Americans allocating those funds for me, I don't think that would have been possible. So I definitely appreciate the organization for giving me the opportunity. And uh, last but not least, just the keys to success uh, based on what I've been going through or what I've experienced during my internship program. Um, to be successful, I feel like you should always be open to change and diversity. Um, I'm the only African-American male that works in law enforcement in my region, I believe. And it's not a problem at all because I was open to it. Um, it's just not, not just race, uh, the culture, uh, sexual orientation, religion, um, even climate change. You gotta be open to it if you wanna be successful in this career. Um, as stated earlier, we do a lot of time uh, making contact with the public. Uh, so having great soft communication skills um, with the public is definitely a plus to have, ensuring that you do your job the correct way. And be open to taking uh, constructive criticism from your supervisor or mentors, uh, because these people have been in your shoes and been doing this job a lot longer than some of have even been born. Uh, so definitely taking um, uh, constructive criticism from them is definitely something to take heed to. And uh, to wrap it all up, these are just a couple of crime scenes uh, that the United States Forest Service here in Region 4 uh, encounter on a, probably the day-to-day -day basis. Uh, real quickly, this first one was my first crime scene I encountered when I became a uh, trainee here at, uh, with the Forest Service, uh, a car crash. Um, the second is a prescribed burn fire where law enforcement is responsible for providing security for those. The third uh, image is a car that was driving on ice and got stuck and law enforcement is attempting to pull that vehicle out of the ice. The fourth one, someone stole rocks from uh, public lands, which is a violation and a heavy fine. A uh, helicopter, um, this was a helicopter crash uh, somewhere in the uh, Union Wildside National Forest. The fifth image is uh, a timber theft. Somebody was stealing timber, uh, probably for distribution, uh, looking at the size of how much they stole. And last but not least is a marijuana grow that was encountered through the Union Wasatch Cash National Forest. And um, of course that's illegal. And that's my presentation. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. I have my personal and government email. Any questions, I'm definitely, um, Hope to give an assistance for anybody interested in law enforcement with the Forest Service. Thank you, Lonnie. That was great. Um, thanks for sharing your experience. And um, yeah, Griselda will be sharing her screen now, and she will be the last presentation for today. And after that, we will do the questions. You can also um, yeah. put questions in the chat. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I am sharing my screen. And yeah, thank you, Brooke and Lonnie. Your presentations were great. Are you able to see my screen just fine? Yes. Okay, awesome. Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Griselda and I am a past mosaics and science intern. So I'm actually a two time intern um, as a mosaics intern with EFTA. So a little bit more about myself. So like I mentioned, I'm a two-time alumni from the Mosaics and Science Internship Program. Um, back in 2016, I got to work in Denali National Park, which is up in Alaska. And in the following summer, I got to work um, in South Florida Caribbean Inventory and Monitoring Network. Um, so the National Park Service. Yes. You're not in presenting mode and we're like on the first slide. So I don't know if you've already moved forward. Oh, I had moved forward. Um, I was on presenting mode. Maybe it's not showing it. Is no, it's not showing it. it. Huh. Maybe I can try. Because this is when I'm not in presenting mode. Then I had clicked on presenting mode. And this doesn't show as presenting mode for you. OK, no. so let me, I will stop sharing and then retry and share again. So let me do that um, one more time because it looks okay on my end. Okay, is this um, showing as presenting mode? Now it is, yes. It is? Okay, perfect, awesome. Sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had moved on to this slide. So as I was saying a little bit more about myself, um, I have been a two-time alumni from the Mosaic Science Internship Program. 
Um, back in 2016, I did a three month internship up in Alaska. And in the following summer, 2017, I did kind of on the opposite spectrum. I went to um, Florida from up in Alaska. So kind of opposite ends, but both of them were tied. Um, so it was similar sort of work, not exactly the same, but both kind of fell under the realm of acoustic ecology work. So up in Alaska, I was mostly doing soundscapes work and down in Florida, I was monitoring amphibians using acoustics. I graduated from Colorado State University um, with a bachelor's in science and wildlife and conservation biology and a minor in ethnic studies. So I grew up in Colorado as well. And now I am currently in Oregon. Um, so I'm working at the Willamette Valley Wildlife Refuges here in the whole complex. Um, so this fellowship that I'm currently with, I was also able to get through EFTA. Um, this is a year long position and I'm working as a Latino program coordinator. And so it all falls under the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Okay, awesome. So like I said, I got to um, work two different summers as a mosaics and science intern. Um, the photo on the left, that's me doing acoustic work up in Alaska. The one on the right, that's down in Florida. Um, so yeah, so all these beautiful pictures are pictures that I got to take while I was out there. Um, so again, the left one, that's Alaska. And then on the right, the Everglades. So this is a little bit more about what I got to do in Alaska. This was a presentation I gave at the visitor center there in Denali at the National Park. Um, so I did a lot of soundscapes work, which was really research and especially field work heavy. So a lot of my work um, involved backpacking. So I was out in the field for sometimes up to a week or more um, out in the field collecting data. And I got to help with a few other things as well. So I got to do a little bit of motion sensor camera work as well, but my focus was on soundscapes. And then afterwards, at the end of the summer, I got to present the work I had done as well um, at DC and the Department of Interior, which is part of what's kind of tied into this um, whole internship opportunity with Environment for the Americas. So that's also an opportunity that you all get. So not only did I gain a lot of outdoor experience, um, collecting data, doing field work and data analysis, but I also got to kind of um, work on my presenting skills as well. And some more wonderful, awesome pictures of when I was in Alaska. So these are doll sheep up in the left corner. And so actually this was why the park was created in the first place was to help preserve those doll sheep, um, some caribou, and then just me out in the field. Um, just some awesome facts about Denali. Um, so it's six, over 6 million acres. And in the, so I also got to be in the Everglades. The Everglades is the largest national park in the lower 48. Um, however, Denali, which isn't the largest one in Alaska, is still like almost four times as big as the biggest one that we have. Just kind of like context of how much bigger Alaska is. Everything's so much bigger. And um, yeah, just a little bit more about my project. Like I said, I helped, so kind of the final products of that internship opportunity was that I helped create an acoustic archive for the national park. I also got to set out sound stations in remote sites of the park that are still um, collecting data to this day. I helped collect metadata to go along with all the recordings and the sound stations. Um, like I mentioned, I also got to help a little bit with motion sensor cameras, a lot of extensive backpacking trips and remote backcountry sites. Um, and I learned to navigate Jupiter using GPS points a lot more and topographic maps, especially because we were often in areas where there was no maps. And so yay, more wonderful pictures of wonderful Alaska. And then this was a bit more about the work I did in Florida for the monitoring and inventory network. And so that was also acoustic, but it was mostly to help um, monitor amphibians out there. So my title was as a herpetology science technician intern. A lot of it was um, collecting pilot data. So we were using, I kind of helped set up um, a SOP, standard operations procedure document for the National Park Service on how to use uh, automated recording devices that they had never used before. 
to monitor amphibians. And so I got to do a lot of deep learning artificial intelligence software work as well and compare those. And something that was also great about this whole opportunity that I kind of mentioned a little bit in the beginning as well was the professional development side of things. So not only do you get to um, gain skills while you're at your site, you all get to participate as well um, for a week long professional development after your internship has ended in the summer. Um, so this usually happens beginning of August. And so that's a really great opportunity, like I mentioned, to network with people in the Department of Interior, um, to give presentations and to get to know the other interns at different sites and kind of get to see what everyone learned and got to do over the summer. So that's another really amazing opportunity of these internships with Environment for the America is the professional development week. Um, and oftentimes they've been done in DC, but with COVID it might change. I'm not sure if they're still hoping to do it um, in DC this upcoming year. So yeah, thank you all so much for your time and taking the time to listen to me. Um, yeah, I guess I'm the last one of the three people presenting. So I think we can all take questions and I can stop sharing. Yes, you were the last one and we're gonna get off of Facebook Live now and we're gonna take questions. So Chanel, are there any questions in the chat? Yeah, we have one question in the chat. Uh, could you all comment on the types of skills that would make a candidate successful in your position or similar? Um, some examples are reading topographic maps, hiking, etc. So there's different skills and qualifications for each position that we have. So if you go to the um, UFTA website and you click on the position, it'll have a list of the qualifications that they're looking for, uh, supervisors and mentors are looking for. It really depends on the position. Some positions are more um, for mosaics, they're more in the science field um, and maybe more field work for Latina Heritage Internship Programs. Um, we have a lot more internships that are in the education interpretation field. But I don't know if Griselda wants to answer what kind of skills she had for the positions that she was in since there were a lot of field work. Um, yes, I could talk a little bit more about it. And I think maybe next, Lonnie, I saw you raised your hands. So maybe you want to um, chime in as well. What I can say about my positions is I think a really good supervisor is someone who um, you know, pick someone because you do have some sort of skills, but it's also someone who's really willing to learn. So I think not feeling like you have to have all the skills they want when you start um, is, I think, an ideal internship because that's the goal of an internship is to help you increase your skills. So I was a really ad avid um, hiker before I got any of these internships, and I'd gotten a few camping trips, but actually I got to gain a lot of my skills, and now I love backpacking. It's one of my favorite things to do. But when I went to Alaska, I had only actually backpacked once before, and it was like only one night. And so a lot of it, I got to gain those skills while I was out there in my internship. So I think just showing that you're really willing, you know, obviously do talk about the skills you do have, but how you're willing to try a lot of things and your excitement about trying new things that might seem intimidating at first, but can be like wonderful new opportunities. And then obviously my next summer, I think I had had a lot more experience because of my prior summer. Yeah, Brooke, if you had another thing to say, or Lonnie. Yeah, I was just going to definitely expound on what my colleagues have said. Uh, it's not necessarily about what skills you already possess um, when it comes to uh, working out here. Um, you just have to be willing and wanting to learn uh, for example, I come from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and there's not a forest or mountain in sight. So coming up here, learning about maps, learning how to hike, all that was foreign to me, you know, but just having the ability to be eager to learn and having so much of an interest for the career, it makes you want to learn it. So there is not, it's not hard to get up and learn it because you want to learn it because you want to be so successful. So I don't believe that you need to come with a, uh, a, a whole lot of tools and skills to be successful. Just be willing to learn and adapt. 
and gain those tools and skills to help you be successful. Thank you. Uh, another question, what do you think made you stand out in your applications? Um, so if you guys wanna think about that, uh, we did get a question about how many applicants do you typically get? We get hundreds of applications um, every summer. Does Brooke or Lonnie or Griselda want to take um, what want to answer what you guys think made your stand out in your application? Yeah, so I think and Brooke kind of hinted at this as well. So like she said, don't get discouraged if you don't get chosen your first time you apply. We've had so many interns that I know past interns who didn't get in the first time they applied. But also, like Brooke said, part of it was work she was doing at her university. I think that was a big part of why I got my first internship in Alaska doing acoustic stuff was because I was actually volunteering. So it was kind of something I was doing for free at the university. Um, when I had time, I was volunteering at a listening lab that was in partnership with the National Park Service doing acoustic ecology. And so I started off volunteering there. Eventually I was able to get like a part-time student um, of employed through the university as a student employee, partly. And then I think that really did stand out in my application when I applied for the internship. So, you know, just take up advantage of opportunities at your university as well. Like re reach out to um, advisors, professors, don't be afraid to like kind of ask them for like, hey, is there anything, you know, like maybe I can just volunteer a few times a week. And usually that allows you to get a job with them eventually. And then that makes you more competitive to apply for different things as well, like this. Uh, we have a question about how involved are interns in experimental design? It said often learning and following from a supervisor or does it feel quite collaborative? Yeah, I can answer this. Um, my project, I felt really lucky because I was involved really heavily with the experimental design and it kind of my supervisor took a like hands-off approach and sh she was there whenever I had questions and I could collaborate with her um but yeah most of the experimental design was up to me so yeah it was a really great learning experience I would say um it kind of depends on the position sometimes uh positions uh or you're doing work that kind of already has a protocol that's been done for several years. So in that case, um, you would just follow that protocol. Obviously, if you are in a meeting with your supervisor and there's things that you wanna explore a little bit more, that's definitely a conversation you should have with them. Um, they're kind of there to scaffold like your work to your needs. So uh, we always say to advocate for things that you um, wanna get done. And if I may add to that, Chanel, thank you, that it, uh, the, the communication between intern and supervisors is crucial. Let supervisors know that you wanna be more involved in that experimental design and what you wanna learn. And usually they'll make a mentoring plan involving your needs and wants. Thank you. Brooke, there's a question specifically for you in the chat. Um, someone, Andres is planning on buying a camera trap for monitoring animals in a preserve. Which one did you use? I used Reconyx brand cameras, um, both the 2020 version, which I recommend because it's newer. I used the 2020 version and 2012 models. Um, the 2020 one is better because it also takes videos. So yeah, I use Reconyx brand. Thanks. I think those were all the questions in the chat. Does anyone have any other questions that we can answer? And then we can put in the chat, if Chanel can put in the chat, the links to our website so that you guys can click on those and see the positions that are available for this upcoming summer.
Um, in the chat, I just put the emails for the Mosaics and LHIP programs. I'll also put a general internships uh, e um, email and then I'll put in the links to the websites. Will the next career fair have different presenters? Um, the next day in the life will have different presenters. Um, all of the interns that are, will be in that one are currently working at different locations as well. The next webinar we have is actually, you'll hear from some of the supervisors that we've worked with. So that will obviously be different people, but the next day in the life will be different in interns as well. Great. Well, um, Chanel did share our internships at environmentfortheamericas.org email. If you ever have any questions, please email us. Uh, we monitor that all day and we can get back to you pretty soon. Um, if you go on there and if you go to the websites and look at the positions and you have specific questions about them, please feel free to reach out as well. Uh, but like Brooke mentioned, please take time to review those and to fill out your application. If you really want to be considered for the positions, um, there's, you know, it's a lot of work to put into an application. There's a lot of open ended questions um, and just make sure that you're answering them. You know, you're answering the question uh, well written and that you actually, you know, put in the effort because we do get a lot of applications. So you want to stand out. And I just want to say that all of you who are attending just even now these webinars like that's amazing I'm sure you all will stand out especially if you're consistently coming to these and you have your camera on you're engaging asking questions like you'll definitely stand out to all of you who are reviewing the applications so I think you're already like a step ahead of the game yeah and we got a question if there's a draft of the application um, so yeah, if you go to like Environment for the Americas website and you click on internships and then application, there's a green button that says click here to download the 2022 application questions. So you can review before you start working on your application. Yeah, because the application's already open, right, um, Danita? Mm -hmm. it's, okay, it's yeah, open. maybe this person, because it says before the application opens. So Mosaics, the period is open until January 23rd. And for LHIP, it's open until February 6th. Uh, all applications are active now. You can find the positions on the respective websites. You can also find all of the positions on the Environment America's website. Um, but yeah, you can download the questions and I would recommend like answering them in like a Word document or something and then copy pasting when you are ready to go. Yes. And for the applications, you're able to select your top three sites or three positions um, to be considered for. So if you apply uh, Environment for the Americas website, you're able to select three and you can select both from LHEB and Mosaics. Um, I think for LHIP, we're waiting on a couple more positions to be approved. So those should be uploaded uh, when they get approved, but um, Yes, most of them are already up and the application is life. So you can start working on that. I have a question. Um, I was working on the application, but I didn't see if there was like a word count for each prompt. Is there? I don't think there's a word count. Um, I think you answer to the best of your abilities. Um, we obviously say quality over quantity, but make sure that you answer um, all components of the question. Yeah, there's no word count. Thank you. So that is the application. Daniela, if I can add to that. Uh -huh. So in your open question, 
answer you can you know how you can pick three parks but that number one park that you really want to go to just emphasize how much you want to learn or the skills you have to make you a perfect fit because we do send that open ended answer to supervisors for evaluation as well and if they read that you're interested in the park because you've been a long time visitor or a long time admirer of the work that they're doing that really speaks to them as of your interest in that park and that position and you can you can talk about your three your three the three parks that you picked as well so don't limit yourself to say i only want to go to this park because this is the one i know uh, but yes we've read open-ended answers that are really really beautiful i'm um, saying ever since i was nine i i'm interested in rocks and this was my experience and that's why i want to work at mammoth so just go on out be honest and yes that's i think that was the point of it all honesty and why you want to go to the, the park in the position Yes. Great. Do we have any other questions before we end for today? Yes, I have another question. Um, the question that I have is, so I'm currently in grad school and I know that the application requires transcripts. Do I submit my transcript grad school or undergrad and grad school, like both of them? Uh, your most recent. Uh, transcripts. So for your graduate school transcripts. And then we had another question. Should we incorporate the other two part choices in our open ended answers? Yes, I think you want to emphasize on your number one, but if you can also incorporate some for your other two, just um, in case your number one is not available. Um, that would be great to have. Yes. And also, um, if there's like a field of study that you're interested in, like if you're interested in doing like wildlife studies or something, um, I would, it's worth mentioning because we can also, if you don't get selected for one of these, we can keep you in mind for other ones uh, that we get in the future or refer you to um, a, a different internship as well, so. Yeah, and when you're like filling the um, open-ended answers, if you have, if you're applying for two different, like totally different positions, that's when you really want to incorporate um, answers for the other positions. Um, so if you're applying for something that is, you know, more of like in the education interpretation, but then you're also applying for something that's more in the field, collecting data, um, you want to make sure that you answer for both. Is there a timeline for interviews or when we sh when should we expect to hear from you? Uh, Chanel, do you want to answer that? Sure, I think um, we plan to February, March, do interviews and uh, select candidates um, in early April. So yeah. Um, I have another question back to the transcripts. Um, I just finished my first quarter of grad school, so. I only have two grades, so should I just submit those two letter grades? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to submit your undergraduate as well, if that's something that you can do. And then, um, yeah, question. if it doesn't allow you to upload two different documents, just include your most recent ones, even if it's only two. And then for Griselda. Oh yes, I just saw that on the chat from Evan. Um, well, first of all, hello Evan, yay, CSU. <laughs> um, I think, so what really helped me, and I think I mentioned a little bit about this before, was getting connected to professors and advisors, like it's just outside of simply attending classes. So I was a part of a, diff, a few different um, student organizations there, the Society for Conservation Biology and the Society for Wildlife Biology. And through that, I made connections with my professors. So they were able to provide a lot of guidance um, with, and so that's kind of how through them, I was able to start volunteering at the lab that then I eventually was able to get paid for 
as a student employee. And then that work I had done, I was able to put into my resume when applying for this um, internship opportunity back in 2016 for that opportunity in Alaska. So it all kind of just builds on itself. So I would just strongly encourage, and you'll find them almost all. So I'm not exactly sure what college you are, but I was in the College of Wild, um, Natural Resources, Warner College of Natural Resources. And at least in that college, every professor I have ever talked to outside of class who I've connected with is genuinely super interested and cares about their, their students. So they were more than helpful in just connecting me with different people to get more experience um, doing field work or getting more experience in a lab. And then that all adds up to you being more competitive when you're applying for paid internship opportunities. So yeah, that's definitely what I recommend. Talk to your professors, advisors outside of class and just let them know that you want more experience outside the classroom. Thanks, Griselda. All right, we're down to the last few minutes. So do you guys have any other questions that we can answer? All right, it looks like there's no more questions. P please feel free to email us. Um, Brew, Griselda, Lonnie, thank you so much for presenting, taking the time out of your days to be here with us. Um, and then I hope to see all of your applications this year. Um, thank you for being here. All right, bye everyone. Bye, thanks for having us.